This is the first video to introduce someone to a vector. What is a vector? We say a vector is something that requires for its description a magnitude and a direction for the purposes of, of this course. So we first contrast that to a scalar, which is just a number. For example, the mass of a tiger might be 300 kilograms. That's just a number and a scalar. Or the height of a tree might be 30 meters, and that's just a number. Or maybe the temperature in Minnesota might be negative 40 degrees. Now that could be Fahrenheit or Celsius since they're both the same at negative 40. So it can be positive or negative. It can have units or not have units, but it represents just a number. Let's take, for example, you. And you might ask yourself, where is the tiger? And the tiger might be, say, 200 meters away. But now 200 meters away is it all you need to know. You need to know in what direction. 200 meters away. And so it might be 200 meters away at a direction of 30 degrees south of west. I have north, south, east, and west here. And you might want to know, where is the tree? And the tree might be 40 meters away, but you want to know where is the tree? Because you're going to try to escape the tiger. And so you need to know the direction that that is, say, 45 degrees east of north, or since 45 degrees is exactly between this angle, you might say directly northeast. So I've written the vectors up here in descriptive notation. Each vector had a magnitude with a units, 200 meters and 40 meters, and then a direction. The tiger was at a direction of 30 degrees south of west, and the direction of the tree was directly northeast. And I won't always differentiate them with the colors, but I'm going to try to do that to start so we can be clear. We can represent vectors as arrows. If we do that, then of course the arrow points in the direction that the vector is pointing, and you can make the length of the vector representative of the amount. Now, that doesn't always work because sometimes they just become too large or too small. And also, remember there are lots of vectors that are not just distances. For example, a velocity is also a vector and velocity is telling you the speed at any instant of time that you're going, how fast you are going, as well as the direction that you are going. For example, if you are running to the tree, you might have a speed moving at 10 meters per second, and you have a direction. You are also going northeast towards the tree. Note that this is a different vector than the displacement vector, or the distance vector. They may be pointing in the same direction, but their magnitude has different units something that is 10 meters per second in the northeast is not equal to something that is, say, 10 meters in the northeast. For two vectors to be the same, they have to have the same magnitude with the same units, as well as pointing in the same direction. What they don't have to be is in the same place. So let's say, for example, you don't need to run to the tree because there is a wildebeest that is much closer. In fact, it's sitting here at a distance of 40 meters directly northeast of the tiger. If we write that vector out, so here's the vector describing the displacement, the location of the wildebeest from the tiger. It's 40 meters from the tiger at a direction directly northeast. Now this vector is in fact exactly the same as this vector, the tree in relation to you. If a vector has the same magnitude and points in the same direction, they are the same vector, even if they are in different points in space. So that brings us to the first important rule for vectors, which is you can translate them without changing them. So translate, not rotate. You can translate a vector and it will still be the same vector. However, if you rotate the vector, you now have a different vector. Another way to emphasize that is to note that a vector is not de defined by its starting and ending points. These two vectors have different starting and ending points, but they are still the same vector because they just have a magnitude and a direction. And remember, the units are associated with the magnitude. There are no units with the direction. Finally, let's talk a little bit about notation. I have a vector of magnitude 20 meters with a direction 20 degrees east of north. And if you haven't heard that sort of language before, just so you're not confused, if you want to say east of north, what that means is you start at the north and then you rotate it 20 degrees to the east. 20 degrees north of east would mean to start at the east and then rotate to the north 20 degrees. So if I want to 
write this, I want to represent this as a symbol. Say, for example, symbol A. But symbol A is the sort of thing we represent to be a scalar, just some regular number, and so we want to identify it a different way. I identify my vectors with a bar over them because I'm drawing and it's faster. You will also see A's with a half harpoon. You will see a, well, vector symbols with a full arrow. Sometimes they'll put bars underneath the letter, or a lot of books will then have them in bold, which is, of course, very cumbersome to draw. Just for simplicity, I use the uh, vector A with the bar over it. The magnitude of a vector also has some, some special notation. If I want to identify the symbol for the magnitude of a vector, sometimes you will see the double bars around a symbol with the vector symbol, any of those, or maybe even single bars around uh, something with a vector. But you'll also see just the letter without the vector symbol representing the magnitude. And that's what I use because that also is much faster to draw. In summary, a vector will have a magnitude that describes the amount of the vector, and the magnitude has the units and is always positive, and it has a direction where a scalar is just a number that may be positive or negative and may have units as well.